okay good evening or good afternoon or good morning okay uh, <clears throat> i'm planning to as i mentioned that on monday that uh, that since that we couldn't cover that uh, all the material on from chapter chapter one uh, chapter three i promise that i'm gonna have like another video and then upload it into blackboard later on so then this is going to be the part two of for the continuation of uh, what we had been doing on monday okay so uh, for the that on the other hand that i'm going to go ahead and then upload this one pretty soon once we're done with this one because we have to cover some material from chapter three and then on the other hand that i'm going to meet you guys today at uh, 5 30 in your time pacific standard time and then 8 30 in my time in eastern standard time for the uh, office hours okay if you have any question on homework two homework one quizzes quiz one midterm and anything that uh, you can just uh, join the session and then ask the questions and then i can help you out to that sort out anything and then help you out to just to work on all all of them okay it's not a big deal help is on the way help is always there okay so let's get back to that what we had been doing uh, in chapter three chapter three as i mentioned in the very beginning we were talking about the graphical representation of uh, what we had done in chapter two chapter two we did the numerical measures numerical measures means that like we were talking about how to get the mean okay then sometimes the standard deviation aggregates and all kind of stuff how to sort out those kind of a thing that uh, numerically then later on that uh, we really wanted to uh, see that uh, if you were talking about like a whole bunch of individuals then rather than just single individuals any in property how could you gonna uh, analyze the, that uh, data related to those kind of a th uh, that's kind of a situation that way that uh, we came up with some kind of a model called the distribution distribution is the variation of the uh the variable you're gonna see how the very how the how your variable would vary okay by looking at the this uh, particular distribution distributions are graphically represented by histogram bar graph box plot and and uh, etc those kind of a uh, graphical representation are utilized to uh, just to represent the uh, present the, uh, this uh, <clears throat> distribution okay distribution properties okay in the first place that we were talking about the quantitative variable quantitative for the quantitative variable we can draw the histogram we are in the middle of doing that one and then we talk about that how would we going to do this one for uh, for the sample as well as for the population for both cases we have a distribution both cases we have a histogram both cases we have a smooth curve you can remember then later on we were thinking about once the wave, uh, distribution sorry once you draw your histogram okay once you draw histogram for your given data that's the only thing that you have in your hand the given data how could uh, then we how, sorry then uh, we're gonna go ahead and then uh, how could we just we know how to do that one. We just uh, drew the histogram. We can draw the histogram. Okay, with the, with, by looking at the histogram, histogram y-axis gonna contain frequency while you're gonna have variable on the x-axis. And that means y versus x, that means frequency versus uh, variable or relative frequency versus variable. If you have a frequency versus variable histogram, we're gonna call that one frequency histogram. If you have a relative frequency versus histo variable in that particular histogram, we're going to call that one density histogram or relative frequency histogram. We discussed that one in a large scale in the previous uh, on Monday. And um, on the other hand, it seems like that uh, I recorded that uh, that Monday session. It seems like I even I, I recorded for sure. I'm pretty much sure that the way that I'm doing right now, something has happened, and I don't see that the recorded session. Okay, 
so since that uh, recorded session anyhow that in the, that's why i was just to recap and then uh, the, just to go back and then uh, just to refresh your memory over what we had been doing there that day rather than going through the whole thing i don't think that we have that much time to go through that session back again and make a video and upload to the system because the kind of a, like my all the other works and everything and then i'm buried with the work i cannot find a time to just to go back and do that uh, video again i think that if i get a chance i'm going to do that one for sure okay but uh, i cannot promise that i'm going to i definitely going to do that one, okay but by any chance that uh, today that if no one going to sh show up then sometimes i might going to go ahead and then do that that complete that uh, uh, the start up from i'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning of chapter 1 and then going to go ahead and then catch up there that i started today in this video okay so anyhow that uh, uh, that we were talking about that uh, smooth curve histogram then distribution distribution is the, that uh, smooth curve we're going to take out and then talk about their shapes uh, and all kind of thing then later on when you draw the hist that you sample histogram you were thinking about where this histogram is coming from and remember that uh, when we draw this one, that's what we call the sample the data generating process. Data generating process. Okay. Data, data generating process means you are looking for a population from where your data are coming from how they look like, what it would be like that, those kind of properties, okay? Let's say if you go to page 73, page 73, see, I'm gonna go ahead and share this one. See, when you draw the histogram for the sample, which is called the data histogram, or sample distribution or data distribution, you are looking for that, where my data is coming from, what kind of a distribution, what kind of population distribution, that process you're looking for, what generated data, what distribution has generated my data, and looking into that process, looking into the process of that, uh, what kind of a distribution has generated your data is called the data generating process the process in which you're going to look back into and see that uh, that my data or the, whatever the data you have in your hand coming from what kind of a population distribution that process is referred to as the data generating process dgp okay dgp DGP. See, then later on, we were in the uh, middle of see, 3.4. We were talking about how we're going to go back and forth in this uh, uh, the DGP or the population. In another way, that's called the population and the sample. Okay, population and the sample. Okay, they say that you have, see, the way that they have done over here. You're gonna you're gonna have that on your you have you're gonna roll a die you're gonna roll a die okay when you're gonna roll a die then uh, we can pick one number at a time if you roll a die you know that what are the numbers that you can have to the uh, your population see that's why we're gonna call that one okay See how this can be connected. Yeah. So <laughs> see, 
you can build it up your model. See, I'm going to call those numbers model pop. Model pop. See? Model pop. I'm going to call the that variable model pop. That means I have one through six numbers. One through six. See? Now I can put that one into data frame. Data frame to the model pop, that variable. Model pop. This is the variable. That's the variable. That's the variable. See, data frame. Now you can say dice rolls. That's the data. Data set or data frame. See? This is the variable again. See, this is the variable. That variable consists of numbers. See, those are the values of variable. See? So now we're going to have a, they say, have a relative frequency histogram for this one. With the, that, uh, even with the, I'm going to go ahead and get this one from the previous. Uh, slides, okay, it's, a, it's easy. Previous pages will have. Next, next. Let's see that. Uh, what are you gonna have? See, we're gonna get the write the code to create a relative frequency histogram. That's why I put the D histogram. Then my variable would be what? Model dot pop. My data would be what? Dice rolls. Dice rolls. Yeah. And we can talk about the fill and bandwidth. And they say they talk about the bins, no? How many bins? See, number of bins, see? Bins. How many bins we need? Six, otherwise we can have a gaps. See? Since we have six numbers, keep the six bins. Okay? Six numbers, six bins. One, two, three, four, five, six. See? This would be going to be that one sixth. See, this one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. Okay. This time, the to each week frequency, each number going to occur one time divided by the total number of uh, numbers, which is six, one over 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 six. If you divide one by six, you know that going to be that uh, one point one over six point point sixteen one point sixteen seventeen. Now this is for the population. This histogram for the population. That's for the population. Okay. This is for the population. And this is one. This one is for the population. See? Population. See? Two, three, four, five, six. It's the relative frequency. Relative frequency. So this one I'm going to call rel. So I call the freak. Okay. So this is my variable. Variable is what? The dice number. No. The, see. Model pop variable name. Variable name. See. Its values are one, two, three, four. I six. It's gonna be what? One sixth. One sixth. Everything has the same value, which is point one seven two. See? If you're gonna get that one to two decimal places, that would be your histogram. See?
like that. Okay. Then if you want to pick that something from this one, if you want to that pick a sample, okay. Now you want to pick a sample. How could you gonna pick a sample? If you want to pick a sample, you can get this done in two ways. I'll show you what's going to happen. See, you have a population here. Okay. You have a population. It has a numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you want to pick a sample. Sample of what? Sample of size. Unit size 12, that means n equals 12. See? n equals 12. See? From this one, you're going to pick a sample. How could you going to pick a sample of size? For that one they are using, you're going to pick a one number first, okay? Let's say one number. You put two first and then. Okay? You're going to, when you get this one, what are you going to do? You're going to put it back. Then again, it will have six numbers in the population. Then pick another number, let's say three. Then that one, put it back too. See? Then pick that one, pick another number, let's say five. Like if you keep going that one, like the last number is, let's say six. How could we going to get the 12 numbers of, from by putting back, putting back, we're going to say with replacement with replacement, whatever the number you pick. Whatever the number you pick, you're going to put it back. That's how you're going to get the 12 numbers. OK, get number, put it back, make a record of that one and put it back. In order to do like that, you have to use what? Resample. Resample. Who will be resampled? See? You're going to resample. See? The variable 12 times. See? Model pop. See? 12 times. See? 12. Model pop. Model pop. Okay. Model pop 12 times. Okay, this is how we're going to do. Rather than doing this one, we can do like this way. We have a population. I have a number, three, four, five, six. It's the population, okay? I'm going to pick a one number. Let's say three, first number, okay? I'm not going to put it back this one without replacement. That means without replace, without replacement. Without replacement means that now you are short of one in the population. You cannot keep going that one and get the 12 numbers because you're not going to put the number back. Because of that reason, we don't, we don't try to get the 12 numbers per one sample. Instead of that one, we are trying to do this one 12 times. I'm going to forget about that one and then I'm going to go ahead and see. I'm going to refresh this one. Okay, refresh this one and pick another sample. Another sample means I'm doing this one again. I'm not, I'm not picking number for my sample. I'm doing this whole process again. When you do the whole process again, you in the beginning, you already have six numbers there. It's not that put it back, but it's like a, you are repeating. Okay, here in the first case, you are not repeating. You pick pick something and will not see. I'm gonna have only one, see, one sample only. See, look at the one sample only. See, within the sample you have twelve items, twelve numbers. Here not like that. 
here I click one, I'm not gonna put it back. I'm gonna do the process, process again, refresh the process. But still then you're gonna have 12 number, six numbers again in population because you are doing that one again, repeated sample, okay? Then let's say then you pick a number four. Then you keep doing this one for 12 times, still you have a numbers, you're not gonna go. You're not gonna go uh, you're not going to be short of numbers, see, because you are refreshing the process. You're not going to put it back. If that's the case, you're going to get a sample with the population uh, model pop, sorry, model pop, model dot pop, you pick one, but you're going to do this on how many times? Do 12 times, see, that's what the with replacement, without replacement. So without replacement, you are picking one at a time, but one sample, there's no put it back, you are not planning to put that back, but you refresh the process. Since you are not planning to put this back in the second setting, you're not gonna do this one like a sample. See, now you were thinking why we cannot write like this sample model pop comma 12 you know the reason that one if you go with the sample you try to pick the 12 numbers from the same time same time in like one after the other for the same sample for the one sample you're gonna if you're trying to absorb all these into one sample there's no way you can have 12 numbers because by the time that uh, you selected six numbers all the numbers are gone from the population since you have not put it them back. That's called without replacement. Because of that reason, you cannot use this one, see? You cannot, see? You cannot use this one. That's why we come and do this one separately. Look at those two pictures, we'll give you correct idea of that with replacement and without replacement. With replacement means you're gonna absorb to the same sample. Without replacement means you are picking up several sample with sample size one. Sample size one. Pick a sample of size one and you do this one 12 times. You can create a put all the 12 numbers together. Now, another sample of size 12. See? The two ways you can get this done. See? Two ways you can get this done. Okay? That's what they were doing over here. See, then uh, let's take as a simulator sample 12 die roll sampling without replacement from the six possible outcome. You have a six possible outcome and we call that a sample one, okay? Which code would you use to accomplish this one? If you wanna get the 12 die rolls, see? See sample, see that? We, we see, with replacement, with replacement. With replacement, as I said, you can use the P sample. If you don't put it back, you cannot have to it, okay? Then let's uh, save this into a vector. You save that into a vector, see? You get the data frame, you save that into a vector called the dice rolls, okay? Now you are gonna try to create a, see? Now you're gonna do this one, data frame, see, resample to something, the population resample, sample one put it into a data frame, all the dice rolls, see, this is how we're gonna do. Now it's called the sample. In the beginning, dice rolls, we call the dice rolls for the word. See, can you remember in the previous page, we call the dice rolls. For the population, see. That's for the population. You have one to six, then you put to the data frame, data frame call the dice rolls. Now you pick a sample, okay? You pick a sample of size 12. You pick a sample of size 12, see? That's what you call the dice rolls now, see? See the difference? Then you put that into sample, okay? Not the population, not the population. You pick this one from the population. That's a different thing. 
you have a proof, you pick this one from the model population or this variable numbers one to six, 12 numbers using the three sample function and call that on a sample. That sample put into the data frame. Write a code to create a relative frequency histogram and don't use any custom coloring. Okay. Then let's say that how what what's going to happen when you draw a histogram. Okay. It's a variable name. That's a variable name. It's a variable name. That's the variable. See. It's a sample. See. That's the variable. This is the variable. Now sample. The earlier variable was what? Model pop because that's for the population. You see, the population you drew that one. This is what I was talking about. For the population, see, for the population, I make it clear. Okay, I'm gonna make it clear. Sample for the population, you got that one model pop, but six numbers, one to six numbers. Then you put this one into a data frame data frame group of see data frame and then call the dice rolls okay now in this setting if you go to the sample again you have a model pop it's one to six numbers from that one, you're going to pick a sample. How do you pick a sample of size 12? Three sample function of you're going to go to the model dot pop, come out 12, and this being assigned to sample one. Okay, sample one. Then I'm going to put the sample one into data frame and call the dice rolls again. Okay. Data frame. I'm going to put sample. See, that's what I'm talking about. And then for here, you're going to draw the histogram for what? See? See? You put the GF, okay, this one. If you draw the histogram, relative histogram, you have this kind of a graph. You can remember. See? That's the model pop. That's the name of the variable. It's the relative frequency, okay? Relative frequency. This is one six. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the histogram. We're gonna draw for this guy. And what's the command for this population histogram? It's called the population histogram. How do you do that one? GF histogram. Your uh, variable is called the model pop. Come on, your data is called the dice rolls. See? Then you got this. For this one, if you draw this one, the rare frequency, you're not going to have the same thing. See? It's, it might going to have something like this. See? Sometimes. May be or may not be. Okay? See? This time variable we call the sample one. Then sample histogram. I'm gonna call that one a sample histogram. That's why they call them. See, this will create a density histogram. See? Now this will create a density histogram, GF histogram. See? So if you go to see, it's a sample one. You do another one to sample two. This is a gram for GF. Um, this is a gram. I'm going to show you, okay? Data means sample one, comma, data means dice row. Okay. This is what I was talking about, okay? This one GF is token. This one Q. This is H. Histogram. See, 
sample one data dice two. The other one population. See model dot pop. The other one for the variable data dice rows dice rows in both cases. You see. Look at how they differ from each other. See, it, it, it's not even look like this one population, but it can make this one like a population if you use a large sample. Okay. See, sample two, see, sample one. Then you go to this one, your variable is sample one. Sample one, the data called the dice rolls. Don't worry about the fill and color and bandwidth. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Our sample and capital C. If you keep the band at six, if you take out the band and let them to do as what they want. Okay, number of bins. Okay, bins. How many bins? You need one, two, three, four, five, six. Six bins. Six bins. One, two. This is density here. Okay, the two in the middle. Okay, bins. Let's see that how many bins, see, set bins to 60. And add some code to create a density histogram. And examine the distribution, to examine the distribution of our example. Set bins to 6, bins equals 6. That's exactly what we did, oh, sorry, see, bins 6. So we have see one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say that on this one, why this is being shifted? Uh, sample one. This is set this to be. We have a twelve numbers. One, two. You don't see six. Right? Um, sample one data dice rows fill. Write a code to create a relative frequency histogram. Remember to put uh, in his in argument. Custom coloring or custom. We don't need the custom coloring, but that's okay. <sighs> Yes. Okay, I'm gonna run this one one more time. Okay, let's run now. See, one more time. I'm getting better, see. One, two, this depends on that by what situation, okay? Two, three, four, see, five, six, like that. See, it's not not exactly like that, but that your population histogram, okay? So you can do this one, another one, see, another one. I am. See, I scroll, see, this one sample two, see, 
if you do this one, keep doing, you're gonna get exactly something like that, but not exactly like that. If you do again, see, you're gonna get a different one. Now what are you gonna do? For each of these, see, see, now you are trying to get the smooth curve, they not look the same, see, see. But if you get a large number by increasing the number of bins, see, number of bins, see, You can get closer to what? Get closer to population. Look at they got closer to population. See, thousand rows. See, not the, not the six. They they come up with another one to six, not the twelve. Your large sample. You are not using a small sample. Now you are using large sample. See. You see, we created a three sample. For the three sample, we draw the three samples of size 12, we drew the histogram. They, not the, they don't look the same, see? They don't look the same, see? Now what are you gonna do, see? We increase this one, three, four, five, 24 size rows. See, create sample three, sample number four, sample number five, three, four, five, sample, three, four, five, sample number, see? Three, see, three, four, five of 20, 24 dice rolls. Now you're gonna use the one and two already here. And the third one, you can make, see, three of them you're gonna make with the different sample sizes. Okay, we can do that one. Okay, you can say your sample two would be with the size 24. Okay, and you're gonna make another say the sample with the size 24, not the 12. See? This one also, see, size 24. Add this new sample to the dice roll data frame. New sample to the data frame, see. See, if you go ahead and put the data frame, put data, Frame. There's a data frame you can see sample, 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 three comma, sample, four comma, sample, sample, three comma, see, three, four, five. See, just think about that, dice rows. This will create a histogram of your sample three, add on to it, include the density plot, okay? See, you can see samples. See, see dice rows, data means dice rows. Add these new samples to the dice rows data frames. Okay, you can go one by one. One by one. Sample three. Sample three. I'm gonna say sample three with the 24 histogram, sample, dice rows, bin six, creates a density plot, see? Density. I could give you that one.
Okay. Okay. GF. Yeah. GF. Can I remember that GF density would be that we have that? GF density would give you that. Why it's not giving me that one? This uh, data, dice rolls, sample three, data frame, sample three, dice rolls, GF dehistogram, sample three, data dice rolls, color, fill. Beans. Okay. Okay. Good. Then. Okay. Sign greater than this. Then now it's getting. It's gonna get that density curve, covering that one based on what we have. You can pretty much do the same thing for the that. Dice roll, see. Sorry, uh, data frame, data frame three, sample two, sample three, sample four, sample five. Okay, three. We already did this. Is the fifth one. Fifth one. Okay, then uh, we gonna extend this one to see. Can say sample. Oh. Okay, then the other one. I can say the histogram for sample five. Oh. See, we have a three. This is for the. This is this is for the. Sorry, this is for the sample five. This for sample four. This for sample three. We already have sample three, another one too. Okay. This is how we're going to do that. See? So that's what they were talking about over here. Instead of using a small sample, now we're going to increase the sample size. Increase the sample size. See? see? You can increase the sample size. See? If you increase the sample size, see, let's see what's going to happen. They say increase this one to the thousand. Okay. And it has been named, it has been named large sample instead of sample one, two, one, two, three, four, five. See, it's only a thousand. No? See, thousand. Add this one to a data frame. See, add large sample to the dice for data frame. See, data dot frame. Large, large sample. Use this field to create a histogram for see large sample data dice rows color beans and and if you want you can get even the density curve. See, you don't have to worry about that one, but they're not looking for the density curve, they're smooth curve, they were looking for the just the histogram. See. See, it's getting very close to the population, sorry. Population, see, population histogram, see. That means the larger the value, larger than the size of the sample, more accurate the answers would be at the end of the day, see. That's what they were doing over here, see. See. So now even though there's small sample unreliable and sometimes misleading, large sample usually tend to look like the parent population that they are drawn from. This is true even when you have a weird population. For example, we made up a simulated population that kind of has a W shape. Okay, let's say we can have a 
some kind of a, that uh, sample with the W shape, okay? If they're gonna call this one, they have already done that data set. They ran this one. It's the name of the W part. Data set name called the weird. See, it is in the weird data frame. They got this shape, but if you increase, see, 24 to that one, small sample first, okay? You're gonna change this one to small sample. We're gonna call that one uh, small sample. You get it from three sample from a sample has been taken from the population called the weird. Okay. See. Same way that we took this one, if you see. Model pop, large sample, free sample, get it from the model pop. They see, model pop, that's the population name. See. see. The data has come in from that one. Here, data coming from where? Data coming from, see, weird data frame. See. Small sample from W pop with replacement. See, we are now relative. W pop is the dot uh, pop is the variable. From that variable, you go to 24 and get that one and put it into frame. Small sample and data name is weird. See. Data name is weird. See, when you put the framework, it's the it's a variable. See, the variable has been taken. See, see, it's the variable. Variable has a name. See, W pop. You get some some kind of a numbers for this variable. From that variable, if you Pick the numbers one at a time for 24 times, you get a small sample. That small sample, then you're going to data put into the data frame. See? Then you get the data frame, the sample W pop, W pop 24, the data frame, small sample. Data, we had to pins. It's a problem here. Small sample. You see. No. Small sample. Free sample from W pop. 24 from that variable, see, that's the variable. And you're gonna give the name for that data frame. Same thing, we did the same thing. Here, data frame. Name of our data frame is called the weird. Our fill means Small sample. That's the problem. Free sample. I don't see any. Hmm. Okay, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this one. Copy and paste over here. Doesn't matter. Then. We don't have this one. Create a small sample with uh, 24. Okay. We have a small sample. Small sample has been taken from something called the W pop. 24 controls. Then last sample less, okay. Uh, and put to the dice stores frame. See. The, no, we don't call the dice stores, we call the VM. 
Then small sample is the variable name. Paper name like a weird. Six means okay. okay, they have the six means too. Small sample, e sample, blue pop. Put in the W. Here is the density histogram of the population. Okay, W pop. So from the W pop. You get a small sample. See, now try and draw a relatively small sample from W copy replacement, replacement, and say we to a small sample. See, put your small sample in the weird data frame. Let's say this is a small sample. It's a small sample. Yeah, simply that they were showing over here that uh, when you use the large sample, it seems like a, this, this won't pick up, see? I put small sample, three sample, we're gonna do the function work on the, that uh, W pop. Not the W pop, yeah, W pop, see? It's coming from the W pop, see? That population, see? See, drawing relatively small sample, 24 from the W pop. And then that, that data set, small sample, has been put it into the weird data, assigned to weird data. See? Uh, here is the problem. You see, like that. See, if you increase the same way, like a large sample, this is this is coming from. You can say that you it has been resampled from W pop. How many now? Thousand. I put this into the data frame. See, large sample put into here data set. Large sample data weird. See. You get something, I think, getting closer now, see? If you keep increasing this one, see? You're never gonna get that shape or not, see? See? Systematically, see? And when I try the sense, the large sample will look more like a weird population. It came from the small sample. This is the population look like, see? The population look like this one. It has been done by themselves, see? Done them. So when you do large sample, it's getting closer to the way that you have the population. See, shape, okay? That's what they were explaining over here. Okay, we move on. And the fine number summary. Fine number summary, very easy. If you get the fine number summary, it means like a, in a given data set, okay? Fine number summary means in a given data set, okay? See, fine number summary. Five number summary means okay, very easy that in a data set. In a data set, that would be the minimum value. It's called the minimum value. Minimum value. 
I'm going to call that one min. See, quartile one, quartile one, quartile one, quartile two. See, for the Q2, this Q1, sometimes we call this one median, and quartile three. What I'll say is Q3. And the next, we know that one. See, that means for a given any data, mean here, Q1 here, Q2 here, Q3 here, max here. We discussed this one. Can you remember? If you want to divide that, uh, your data set into that equals, equally distance, four parts, it's called quartiles. See, these are called the quartiles. See? It's coming from the quantile. This is a four quantile. See? See? N quantile. Can you remember N quantile? N tiles. See? We use that one N tiles. Then if you have a four tiles, see? Four tiles means four tiles. Four means four. See? Four tiles. What are the four tiles? Q1, Q2, Q3. Actually, these are the quartiles, okay? The numbers that do that kind of a separation is called quartile as well too sometimes, okay? Those are the devices, Q1, Q2, Q3. How could we gonna find it? We know how to find it by hand. We don't have to worry about that one. That number will be displayed when you're gonna run the, that particular function. So you pick a variable and some kind of variable they are working, see? In max and the C. Median, median means the second quartile, okay? So mindset matters, go to that one, you pick the weight before that uh, WT, WT means like a before the survey is done. See, so see, how could we get that one? You go to favorite stat, fail stats, fail stat of the, that one and give the data. See, this is a setup, see, fail stat. Favorite statistics, fail stat means favorite statistics you're gonna go ahead and get the variable, make sure you put the tilde that is gonna display x-axis like this. And data mindset matters. You go to the data mindset matters and then run that favorite statistic, the new function, that would give you this one, okay? And, uh, and, uh, see? Favorite statistics. Uh, oh, let's try, okay? So that means that when you go ahead and then run this one favorite statistics, the weight, see? See, five code saw WT from the lowest to highest. What's the code going from the lowest to highest? Can you remember? It's a variable. The variable you can go ahead and say that uh, sort, no? Can you remember sort? Then you will give what? You're gonna say the which one you're gonna sort, no? Which one you're gonna sort? You go to the mindset matters data. So you go to the mindset matters. Okay. Then go to the your variable, which is W P. It's gonna give values from the largest to the this one. Then if you want decrease, how will you get the decrease? This is a decreasing, sorry, increasing. If you want this one increasing. On this one increasing, and I say increasing, can you remember? True, increasing, true, increase, increasing, can I remember that we did that one? So, first one increasing. 
decreasing, decreasing, decreasing falls. Fill in that falls, see? Decreasing falls. So it's going to be increasing now, see? So here they're going to go from the C. See? 92, 196. So now you need the decreasing, decreasing true. Now I just took smaller, see? Increasing, we already saw the increase. If you need the decreasing, decreasing has to be true. Okay? So therefore, get one, go ahead and then run this one and see what's going to happen. See? Statistics. Um, see, it's going to give you minimum Q1, Q3, maximum. In addition to that one, you are getting that uh, minimum Q1, Q2. Q2 is the median. Q3 maximum. These five numbers are called the five numbers. Are not. In addition to that one, you get the median, mean, standard deviation, and uh, number of observation in that particular data set. If you run summary summary of this guy let's say would that produce the same as uh, mindset matters yes see either summary or this one see favorite step or summary see they're going to get a favorite step make sure tilde wt and gator okay Let's say that favorite stat would work like this way. I'm gonna see whether it's gonna work like this way. See, uh, mindset matters. Go to the mindset matters. And then go to wait. See, still works. See, favorite stat. See, still works. Any matter works, okay. The what kind of array, different kind of arrangement, but still works. See? see, by looking at this one, we're gonna say your distribution. See, what that means? Can you remember the median and mean? Is the median and mode, median and mean, the same? But they are symmetric. Okay, symmetric. See. You know what I mean? Median and at least median. Okay. In this case, you're going to have a median, mean, mean value, see, mean, median, and mod all going to fall at the same place. But sometimes, in some cases, see, uniform case, see, mean and median. Gonna fall at the same place, but they both are symmetric. This is symmetric, symmetric. This is also symmetric. See? And this is an and well shaped. That's a different thing. Well shaped. This is no, it's not well shaped and rectangular shape. See? rectangular shaped because of that this is called normal distribution normal distribution because of that call this one uniform distribution you know that see like that symmetry symmetric means mean and median at least close to each other by looking at this one median 145 mean 146 they both the same that means you can say it might be symmetric see? By the population, then happy index. You can do the same thing for the population for the happy index data set. Happy planet index. Happy planet index. You go to that one, and uh, then you're gonna go to population. Population. That's the variable. Population is the variable. See, for that one, for the same thing, you can run using. Uh, this one, instead of that one, you can put summary. Summary. See? See? You get right there. See? 
This one median 10, see, mean four to four. They're not gonna be that close to each other, so they're not symmetry. So see, wait a second, does this mean the country with the maximum population has seen only 1,300 people? Hint, it might help you to review how the data were coded. See, does this mean that the country with the maximum population, maximum population, has only 1,304 people. See? No, because it doesn't mean that. What does it mean? In this case, the population, the median population is much be closer to mean. See? See? The median population, 10 million, is much closer to the mean, about 10 million away than that max population. What does that tell? Tell that if it's getting closer to the mean, median getting closer to what? The mean than the max population, max. See? Getting closer to that one than max. That means that max means like a mean. This is a mean, it's the median. This is the mode, max population mean, max population. See. So they say that uh, in the population, 10 million people of okay, median. So median, look at, uh, look at the median, if you get the median, see. Okay, the median, okay. I'm gonna say somewhere here, that's okay, see. It's the median with respect to the median, okay. Median is close to, see, close to mean than to max, see, max. See, so here they say much closer to the mean than max population. If that's the case, it is what? Skewed, in this case, see, median, median, much closer to, to mean than it is to what? To the mean population than the than the man than the max population max than the max then you get what right skewed see right skewed then again you go and then draw in this smoker I'm gonna do this with you Again, this is somewhere here, the median. You can remember this, the median. Median is the, you know, that's a mode. Okay, we don't have to worry about that one. See, close to max than to mean, see? That means median is much closer to max maximum population than to than to maximum than max max than sorry, max than mean then you're gonna have a left skewed left skewed Anyhow, they are skewed if you have something like that. See? Create histogram population. So if you inter introduction about the shape of the distribution from looking at the mean, median, max is correct. Make a histogram of, a, of population from happy planet index. Happy planet index. Happy planet index. See? Happy planet index. Let's draw the uh, histogram for the Histogram, I'm gonna go to GF and let's go. Histogram 
and my my oh no so this my variable would be population comma my data would be a different uh, index let's run the yes. is that true what we thinking about that one see whatever we see here see mean see mean mean it is this is fitting into the way that we have for the happy planet index you know fitting into the right field because your median is much closer to median is much closer to mean than than the max see than the max so it's right skewed see see it's been verified right skewed my median is much closer to this guy minimum population than the maximum population If you had another variable for which the median was much further from the mean, much from the, that's it, much closer to the max. That's the same thing that I discussed. Is probably getting skewed. See, again skewed. Okay, that's the time we're gonna have a that's skewed. Okay, see, see, quartiles and the five number summaries. Numbers are these are the numbers quartiles. The which part? See, are the quartiles the four blue rectangles or the five orange lines? Quartiles. Four blue rectangles. See, those are the quartiles. These are quartiles. These are numbers. Five number summary. Five number summary are the one utilized to get the quartiles. See, these quartiles, these regions, you're gonna get. See, by having five number summary minimum Q1. These are end tiles. These are con tiles. See? See? This end tile. Yeah. These, these are the, that. Uh, see, the quartiles are, we can divide each half into two parts again, divide the four, you know, call the quota. The quartiles are four equal groups of values. It has, if the long event of the value has been cut into the equal size pieces. So this has been cut, the devices, see? These devices are, you need the device to say that what would be the boundaries for the first quarter, minimum and Q1. How do you find the Q1? Do they give the Q1? How do you call Q1, see? See, what's the name of Q1, see? What's the name of Q1? See, that's the boundary for the, First quartile, see, first boundary. In the, this four quartile first boundary, it's called Q2, Q1. Second boundary, Q2, Q3, right? So here, see, make the label to locate on the each of these. A, A called, A means minimum. B, B is the median. C, maximum. D, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Okay. The quartiles are equal sized. What is the equal about the quartile? What is equal about the quartile? Same number of data points. Equal means same number of data points. But they are equal about. What is equal about the quartile? The numbers, how many numbers are going to go to this region? Out of total, re total number of data points, Let's say if you have a, like a eight data, two gonna go to here, two here, two here, two here. Equally that they have been distributed among this four quarters. Okay. What is equal about the quarters? Okay. But the, what is equal about the four quarters is the number of data points included in each. What is equal about the four quarters? See? Same number of data points. See? 
each quarter contains one fourth of the observation, regardless of what their exact scores are on their, their original scores. We don't need, but the, we know that how many gonna go within that piece. Okay? So in order to demarcate where uh, uh, quarter begins and ends, statisticians have given these cut points or range lines. So the cut points they gave the names for the cut points. Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. See, when we statistician refer to phi number summary, they are referring to those phi numbers: the minimum Q1, the median Q3, and so on. So, so I'd like to look at this one again. See, just like that. See, interquartile range. How do you get the interquartile range? Interquartile range means that uh, now, now we have quartiles. Interquartile range. Interquartile range. That means, see, interquartile distance between the maximum and minimum give us a range. A quick measure of how spread out the values in this distribution based on the number of from the field results about the R as a coefficient to find out the range of WT. See, the range. The range gives us the minimum and maximum, the distance between minimum and maximum to find the range of WT, okay, of favorite states. See, range of favorite state, okay, range of favorite states, favorite states of, see, for this one inside, what do you have? And it's a happy index. See? see this one. Happy index, population. Okay, this one I'm gonna this one first we have to get the data. Output data and tilde and uh, Color sign population. Okay. Let's find the range of the favorite statistics. That's the favorite statistics. That means that's the difference between what and what. In this one, mindset matters. No, planet index. No? Okay, we need that one for mindset matters. Happy planet index. Oh, that's a different one. This is for the mindset matters. Mindset matters. Okay, I'm gonna get this one. And WT. Okay, that one too. I'm gonna keep that one and go ahead and then I do do this one for the different data set. The data set is mindset matters. Matters. Uh, variable weight right before we start the, our survey. One ninety six. Hmm. Zero to one ninety six. Range. The range. See, that's the difference between those two. I can use IQR easily. IQR, okay. The difference of the quartiles. So this one called the birth and number of results. If you use R as a calculator to find the range of, oh, okay, range of WT. You don't miss one. We were talking about different things. Okay. The range of this guy. Okay, range of. Um, Of 
196. It's going to go up from 90 to 196. See? The range. They need not refine the, this one. What are you going to do? You're going to take the difference between those two. 196 minus 90. That's called the range. In interquartile range means, like I said, I'm going to show you what they were trying to do over here. Okay. So you have this one. You have a minimum here, maximum over here. Then we have a, this. We have a, this bound. See? This threshold value Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay. If you get the range means, range means max minus min. That means this length, that's the range. They're going to call this another range. That's called the interquartile range. Interquartile range. It's called the IQR. IQR is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. See? So in order to find the range, on the range you go to see data and the particular variable that you are interested. If you need the interquartile range, again, you go to what? Data and variable and see whether you're going to get that one. Okay. IQR. See, I'm going to instead of this one, see, same thing. Copy IQ work. Who's IQ work? See, IQ, you are this one 31.5 IQ work. See, that means the difference between a Q3 and Q1. See, Q3 minus Q1 is 31.5. See, range is what 90 to 196. See, if you want, you can calculate, get the Q1, Q3, and then take the difference to find the IQR, or just give the code for you to find this one. See, that would give you the range. See, this would be give you the range of the data. This would give you the range, the range of the quartiles. That's what is called quartile range. The two points, do we see the middle fifth point from value? Q1 and Q3, see. What is the formula for finding IQ? Q3 minus Q1. Use fine number summary population to find the IQR. You can use R as a calculator. Actually, IQR has a, that, uh, as I've shown over here, that uh, that you don't need to uh, see every planet set. If you go to the IQR one shot, see. If you go to this one, okay. Go over here. You don't need to do anything. IQR will see. Okay, I'm going to do this one in two ways. Okay, happy. And that index that particular data set. I'm going to walk into population. Population, see. And this will give you 26.77. Okay. Another way of doing this one, you're gonna go ahead and run favorite stats, favorite statistics. Fail stat means favorite statistics of this guy. This variable within this this one. See, favorite statistics. And I'm gonna go to favorite statistics. I give a name for this one. Sometimes you can say. Uh, you can say x. Okay, you can simply say stat. Huh? It will show. When you say stat, it will show. It will run. See. And of the stats, IQR. See, you can say IQR. Sorry, you don't use the function as a name. See, you can say IQR. Nothing but go to stats and go to the which entry? 
one, two, three, four, fourth entry minus stats, uh, stats, vector, the second one. If you run, doesn't give anything. If you ask for the IQR, that would give the same answer. See, you can run either this way or this way. See, like that. See, either this way. See, one shot IQR or this way. See, like that. See. Given that the IQR population is about 27 million, IQR has been given, and Q3 is about 31 million, which of the following country population could be considered large outfit outliers? See, China, India, US, Indonesia. See, Q3, 31 million. Population is about, given that the IQR for the interquartile range should be, see, 27. Q3 is about 31. See, Q3. What that means, this is what they are talking about here. Yeah, see, they say that interquartile in a certain interquartile range, okay, here we have minimum. We have a Q1, Q2, Q3, and maximum here, okay. So they say that uh, IQR, which is this one, interquartile range is around like 27 million. See? And Q3 is about what, 31 million. See? See, 31 million. See, that means they were looking for the outliers. How could you gonna get the outliers? They're gonna check here, then how far you can go before you can have the regular uh, values. That means you're gonna go from this you Q3, from Q3, you're gonna go up 1.5 times IQR. 1.5 times IQR. That means you're going to go add to this Q3. This is 27, 31 million already. See, I'm going to calculate 1.5 times 27, 27, one and half. One is 27, half of this one. See, 1.5 times 27. So you're going to have 1.5 times 27, 40.5, see, so 40.5. What I'm gonna do, this is my 31 million, this is 31, that is my Q3. I'm gonna add another 40.5 to this guy to get, this is called the fence, get the fence, which is 31 plus 40.5 means 71.5. Anything on that, this is the same thing you can do from the Q1 to this side to another fence, okay? On this side, anything in between this one is a regular data. Since this one, we're gonna consider on the upper bound only, see? This one, anything here called the outliers. Look at the population in China, gonna be definitely more than 71.5. Outlier, outlier, outlier. If there's a country with the, like a population of 70, it's not an outlier. Okay? It's not unusual. See, box plot. Box plot is easy. Box plot is the, uh, that uh, this one. Box plot is the that uh, graphical representation of the fine number summary. That's it. Okay? I'm using the that command gf box plot. See? box plot. That means that uh, five number summary will be represented with the graphical. See, I can put here, see, with the box. We're going to put, what do you put in the box? 
the quartiles, see, this is the minimum. Here you get the maximum. Here you get the Q3. Here you get the Q1. Somewhere here Q2. Not necessarily be in the middle, okay? Sometimes these are called the hinge, upper hinge. Upper hinge of the box and box plot. You can say box plot. You can write box plot. You can say box and whisker, whisker plot. Doesn't matter. These are the whiskers, see? Upper whisker and lower whisker. This is called the lower hinge. Lower hinge will carry Q1. Upper hinge will have this one, the middle median. See? See, this gap, this height is called the IQR. You know that interquartile range. Right that. Okay? How do you get this one? By GF. See? Box plot. You're going to go make sure you put the tilde and then put, see, in front. Weight come front because the y-axis. My weight gonna go to y-axis, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be keep only one, one of them. See, one. Keep my line at one. This means my line at one. See, this one. If it is two, it's gonna be shifted to two. Okay. Doesn't matter. Your value gonna be weight on this axis. You don't have to worry about this one. If you want, you can set this to zero. Doesn't matter. If you put one, it's going to come to one. If you put two, it's going to come to two. And then you give the data. See, that's, that's it. See? Look at this one if you run. See? Box plot. See this box plot. They are coming from the same the package, GG formula package. Let's say I'm going to change this one to two. Change to two. If you change this one to three, the line going to be shifted to. See, oh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't change it. Three. See, three like that. Okay. So, see, like that. So this will say that we are that uh, when you draw the that. Your box plot. It's a box plot. This length has no. This length. Don't worry about the length. The height has a meaning. That is the difference between Q1, Q3, and Q1. See. So that's why this is the bottom of the line. Bottom line of the box. This is called the bottom hinge. See, bottom line of the box. Bottom hinge. Bottom hinge. See, bottom line of the box called the bottom hinge, or the lower hinge. Okay. The see. They have a name, other name, bottom or lower. That's your Q3. What is the height of the box? What's the height of the box? See, IQR. Bottom of the box is Q1, I'm sorry. The bottom of the box is Q, Q1, okay? You know, this is Q1, quartile one. Height of the box is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. Q3 minus Q1, which is called IQR. Then uh, the lowest point of the bottom whisker, this is called the bottom whisker, see? So these are called the whiskers. See? See, this is called the lower, lower or bottom hinge. This is called the lower or bottom whisker. See? That's pretty much the same way that they call, see? Yeah, and the other one called the top, see? Top hinge. Upper hinge or top hinge. See? Top hinge. It's going to be at Q3. This is called top or upper whisker. That's why it's called the box and whisker. Okay. Height. See, this is nothing but height. Height of box. See, see the height of them. See, highest point on the top is give maximum. The top line of the box called the top hinge Q3, 
and the median going to be the the middle line for the median. See, see we've got something like this. See, so in the population box, but do you see mostly outliers that are too small or too large? In the population box plot, do you see mostly outliers that are too small or too large? See, large, see, outliers. See, you saw that. See, in the population, mine says, sorry. See, see, Q3 minus. See, this is how you're going to find the outliers. Look at how you're going to find the outliers. Happy planet. See, mindset matters. I'm going to change this one to happy planet. Happy. 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 Index. That one. It's not the weight. I'm going to take the population. 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 So many, see, see, it's very thin. The box height is very thin. Q, IQ, uh, see, very thin. See, wow, this is a strange looking box, but you can hardly see the box. It is ski, squished down on the bottom. And there are all these points are here, even though it's uh, supposed to be depicting the box and whisker plot. They are supposed to depict the whisker plot. The point that appear on a box plot now. Are the outliers the points that appear on a box plot are outliers? If they appear above the top risk, they are outliers because R has checked whether these values are greater than this one. See, as I mentioned, if they appear below the risk, they are outliers because the values are smaller than this one. See, when there are outliers, the end of the risk depicts the risk depicts the max or mean value that is not considered an outlier. See, when there are outliers. The end of the whisker depicts the max in max or mean. This is the max, okay? This is the max. This is not considered an outlier. The max not considered outlier, but the others considered outliers. See? Others considered outliers. These are outliers because they were above the box. See? See? Dot. They are, if you see the dots, see? See? If you see the. Uh, the outlier, the end of the whisker depicts the whisker. This one, I'm sorry, this one is the maximum. After the maximum, it's not considered an outlier. See, when there are outliers, the end of the whisker depicts the maximum mean. Okay. So the outliers are anything above that one. Okay, you have to be careful. Okay? Not all of them. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. See, when you draw, I'm gonna make it clear. This is what I'm talking. You have a box, like a box plot, okay? It's a box plot. It's a lower whisker. It's the upper whisker. This is your Q1, Q3. This is Q1. This is your mean. Somewhere you have a Q2. It doesn't matter. This is max, okay? Now what are you gonna do? You're gonna check. Hmm? Whether you have a Q3, okay, we don't know. We're going to add Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. See, this is IQR. IQR, see, which is IQR is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. See, it has been measured from here, okay, measured from here. I mean, so up to here, Q3, you're going to add one point to this one, then you get this one called the fence. From fence, see? This fence. Same way, in the down, you have the same thing. If you measure from here and come to some place, maybe like this, doesn't matter, okay? Then this is called another fence. This is nothing but Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. See, 1.5 IQ. See, that length. See, 
1.5 due to q1 and you're gonna get this point i q r okay? like that so this is another another place this is another place okay? this is actually the place where you're gonna start the threshold for the outliers anything here is outliers 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 if you see that anything here, not outliers, these are outliers, outliers, these are outliers. If you see something up to the minimum, there cannot be anything, but the way that it has been because of this, because of there, there might be some data points here, okay? One point. See, if you got the maximum from the after the maximum, see anything. See, let's say that in this case that you're gonna start all the, the data points above that one. Don't worry about this one. Anything, okay? So this one, see after this one goes out last. Both sides. Also the outliers. See, upper bound. It's called the upper bound. See, this is called the upper bound for up outliers. Upper bound. See, it's the upper bound. Upper boundary. This one, the lower bound for the outliers. For outliers. Upper boundary for outliers, upper bound, lower boundary for outliers. Okay. Upper boundary, see? You can say that it's going to be Q3 plus 1.5 Q3 minus Q1. See? See? Okay, those outliers you can easily filter, okay? Those outliers you can easily filter. Look at in this one. See? See? See that if you go to See this one, this one, this one, okay. See, see the point that I think on a box plot are the outliers. Point all the outliers. If you see outliers, if they appear above the top disk, they are outliers because R has checked whether these values are greater than that. You see, these are outliers. Maximum is not an outlier. If they appear below the bottom disk, they are outliers because values are smaller than this one. When the outliers, the end of the disk depicts the max or mean value. That is not then considered outlier. Okay? In the population box plot, do you see mostly outliers that are too small or too large? Too large, so many, that's not, okay? There are a lot of large outlier countries. No wonder histogram we look before put so many countries into the same bin. It look as though most countries are at zero million. If only we could zoom in the countries with a smaller population, Most of the countries are with the smaller population. The country with the like a larger population are considered like outliers. See, this one we did. Now in the following data game, use the filter to get that the countries with the population smaller than it's this upper boundary. Save this into a data frame called the small country. See? See, upper boundary. How do you get the upper boundary? You're gonna go to the Q3 plus 1.5, Q3 minus Q1. Now you assign to this one called the upper bound. And then you're gonna do the filter. Then you're gonna filter when you filter and get those countries, see, larger than that one, see. How do you gonna filter, see? If you go ahead and then filter and then put them back, the countries with the larger population, you're gonna filter, okay? You're gonna filter now. 
Okay, see, data set for the small countries, fill the, the, the now they were drawing the histogram, but we have to fill this one. How do you fill it? We're going to filter. You're going to go to filter, then you're going to go to the data set. Name of the data, uh, population data, and the population data coming from, population coming from, what data set? The mindset matters, happy planet index. Okay. Happy planet index. To that one, and you're gonna say certain things should be, and you go to the population, population, okay, population. We need the for the small countries less than, see, less than upper boundary, boundary, and be added. Go to this one, you have already calculated upper boundary and filter and say, uh, get the ones that uh, only upper bound ones. Eh? <coughs> upper boundary. Small countries filter. Population. The boundary. This value, this value is it. And go to the population and check. All of oh, population, population. This population, oh, sorry. Population. Population, see. When you filter, you're going to take the one with the, that smaller countries only, see. Less than that upper bound. Let's say the population with less than upper bound, see. Less than upper bound, see. Everything below this one. Based on this one. Anything larger than that one, these are outliers, cut off outliers. And then we do the histogram for that, see. A taller box on the top, see. Is something to think about. It made a box part of the population smaller countries. What would be the box like? A taller box, see? We will be the taller box. I think, and then more outliers, still more outliers. But the data smaller, or smaller country, if you draw this, is your box plot. It's the max, but most of the outliers been taken out, but still they have some outliers even for the, that uh, they were cut off, see? Wait, didn't we just exclude outliers? Why are these outliers in the box plot above, see? Again, see, because this distribution has a different Q3 and IQR than what we had earlier, see? Now the new distribution has a, again outliers. You can keep cleaning, see, outliers still. Even the outliers, it will have a new Q1 and Q3. That will give you the new IQ. That would give you new new upper bound. See, new upper bound. New upper boundary for this one. This is normally called the upper fence. It's called the, see, upper fence. Upper fence. Sometimes they call the upper inner fence.
So the same way this one we can call the lower boundary or lower fence or lower inner fence. Inner fence. Okay, like that. How many names we have? Okay. So that's why they still have the outlines. Okay. So box plot with the bigger upper part. Box plot with the bigger upper part. We write scale, see? Bigger upper part, see? The mean, see? Median is close to this guy. Median is away from that one. You saw that one in our discussion. The median, with respect to the median. Middle line is the median now with, with the aid of the, this box plot. See? Median, see? Median is away from max and median is close to mean. If median is much closer to mean, mean minimum value than to the than the maximum values, you write skew. See? Write skew. See? Your value, see? Write skew. See? Okay. It works for bigger upper part. See? Bigger upper part. Bigger upper part. See? This one bigger, that means getting, see, apart, right skew, see, the value is going to go, see, over here, on the median, see. Then let's say that, uh, let's look at that, how to do the categorical variable. If you have a categorical variable, those are the quantitative variable, categorical variable, you can do, draw what? The graphical representation is given by bar graph. See, for this, see. Again, you're going to get that one on x-axis, see? And if you draw, you're going to have a graph for how many going to be on this one, frequency on this one, see? Create a bar graph for race ethnic in the fingers data, see? If you go to that one, see? If you go to different, excuse me, different, see, this one, for that one, they were looking for, Race ethnic, race ethnic, put the data in fingers. See, see, why we can't forget never can see like that. See, Latin and others. Our graph, it's not a histogram. See, see, you learn about the see, argument, color, feel, everything can be see. You can do the same way in GF bar graph. See? Try applying with the colors here, see? See? Then the same way you can talk about the tally. Tally give you that to free that how many? How many? That's called the frequency table, see? Even by tally, see. Colors and everything you can do the same way that see shape and spread. Visualize and distribution of categories is just as important as visualize and distribution of quantity. However, features to look need to be adjusted a little. Shape of the distribution category doesn't really make sense. That's why reordering the bars, you can alter the shape. We don't want to pay too much attention to the shape of the distribution category, but the center spread are still wrong. But if you go to the peak value, peak value is a very important. See the mode, which one has the highest. One is called the, the mode, see? Which one has the highest one? See, the mode, see? And sometimes you can uh, utilize that one, see? In addition to that one, you can get the frequency table as well for the categorical data, see? The categorical data, you go to tally, you get the variable with the data, run. You do the same thing for, see? Instead of that one, you're gonna say margins true. To get the marginal value, see? Margin means like a to margin total, see? Total marginal, marginal totals. You can get that one too, yeah? See, you can get the total to margin. Write a code to create a frequency table of thumb. See? And get the thumb, see? There's, there to be a, carry, copy, I'm gonna get this one, paste, paste it in the thumb. Copy this one, data, and I can go to the marginals as well, see? 
where, where they have given see if you want you can get the format format means like it's going to give you the instead of that number how many you give a proportion proportion okay Promotion, format will give you proportion. Not only that, you can get the marginals as well from the same thing. See, marginals, marginals means margins. Again, okay. Let's see what's going to happen. Special. Um, see, finger see, 39, how many times it has happened, and then the so addition, see, this is the, this is the, see, frequencies, how many numbers, see, 39 has occurred, see, how many times, see, see, like that. See, it's easy that uh, male, female, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So the sex one, I'm going to put over here for you to see something again. CX. You have, instead of numbers, how many, let's say how many. See, you know this one. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. See, this one six male, female. See, male. We have a hundred twelve people, forty five people. See, see, together you have total one fifty seven. See. Instead of that one, you can get the proportion. That means divided right by 157, which is 0 0.71. And 45 divided by 157, which is 0 0.2866. 6 means 67. That would add to 157 over 157, which is 1. Okay. That's what we are trying to do in this all these things. You have 112, 45, the sum is this one. And then since a proportion, you can do like this way. And you can get the total. See, that's what you see over here. And you can sum them up too to get the total. OK, I'm going to go ahead and stop over here because I have to move on to another class. And then I will see you guys at 5.30 in your time, 8.30 in my time. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.